let's go through a little more discussion of the boundary conditions and thinking about how we can use symmetry to simplify what we're talking about and start relating some coefficients together. So in the prior video, I kind of chose one path to go down. And I'm not going to do a lot of math here, but I want to graphically go through some arguments here. So one thing that we've seen is that our first energy eigenstate would just have zero notes, and so it just kind of one bump. And so then when we go to our second energy state, it needs to have one, one node, so it looks something like this. So here, when we say n is even, so the quantum number is even, we have a sine function here. So sine of, of uh, kx, for instance. And when n is odd, we have cosine of kx. And that should make sense, so cosine of 0 is 1. Now notice here that we have negative, we have positive. Here, if I call this sine, well, sine should go up. Don't, don't worry about that for right now. So we could have actually flipped this whole thing upside down, and that would still match the boundary conditions. So there's an overall phase. You can take your whole wave function and multiply it by negative 1, and that makes no difference. So again, we have these three regions, to the left of the well, in the well, and to the right of the well. And so whether we're talking about n equals odd or n equals even, the overall shapes outside of the well are the same. Inside, it's sinusoidal. But for one, we have the symmetry that says it has to be cosine. For another, we say it has to be sine. And I could draw the next one. Remember that when we're talking about the um, allowed energies of the infinite well, that it actually goes as n squared. So our second energy level would be somewhat close to our first energy level compared to the distance between the third and the second one. Now, the allowed energies are going to be different for the finite well. We haven't yet talked about how we actually determine that, and it's complicated, and there's only going to be a certain number of them, right? If our energy is up here, it's no longer bound. It's no longer in the well. So at least how I've drawn this, we've kind of drawn the energy states in a way that implies there's only three bound states. That may or may not be right, but that would be for a separate video. What I would like to talk about here is a little bit in terms of more the symmetry and especially the coefficients. I haven't written down the coefficients out front of this. And now here's the challenge. I don't have the same notes with me. That was a different day I recorded the video, so I don't even remember the specific letters I was using for each of these. So bear with me because this might not match the last video. But something like what letters are used is not important, right? You can call the variables different things. So I'm starting with the functional form, and now let's think about why we had those coefficients, right? There's an overall normalization that has to be able to happen. But then the second aspect is that at the boundary conditions, we needed the first derivative to be continuous, and we needed the, um, the function itself to, to be continuous. So, so what do we have here? So one key thing to keep in mind is that when we have when we have something like this, notice that there's a symmetry from the right side to the left side of the well. So whatever point here, right, and we can think about this, that this is symmetric around x equals 0. And so we were saying that that is negative L over 2. This is positive L over 2. So whatever value of cosine you have here is, in fact, the same value of cosine you have here. So originally, when we were setting this up, you may have used different coefficients in talking about region 1 and region 3. Because originally, when I set this up, I maybe said a positive qx plus b negative qx. But based on the symmetry, we see that these actually have to have the same coefficient. right? And I'll just call that a probably doesn't match the prior videos. But whatever coefficients I have here, have to match because since the cosine values need to match at plus or minus l over 2, these values have to match. And while this one would get positive l over 2 and this one would get minus l over 2, there's an overall sign up top that's different. So the coefficient has to be the same. And the coefficient here doesn't have to be the same. We'll call that for this video b. Again, used to be called something different. So this is another constraint, that we don't have an independent co coefficient here. Now let's come over here, and the situation is a little bit different. So I'll call this one c. 
So we have some coefficient on the sine, but now notice that due to the symmetry of sine functions, I have a positive value here and a negative value there. And again, this edge is going to be L over 2, positive L over 2. Again, sometimes you'll see this as negative A and positive A. The key thing is it's symmetric. And so when we go to plug those x values in, we would actually get the same value here, but one has to be upside down. So if that's C, I might call this D, this one has to then be negative D. Okay? So the point I was trying to make here is that originally we wrote a bunch of different letters down to be a bunch of different independent coefficients, and just from drawing pictures and making symmetry arguments, we can see that in fact here what we have are three different coefficients here and three different coefficients, sorry, two different coefficients here, two different coefficients here out front. The key is there's a third one, which is that E sub n, what those allowed energies are, are hiding in your k and q. So for each of these, we actually have three unknowns, c, d, and those e's. And so from, again, boundary conditions, we can start to make some additional arguments based on what those first derivatives are, and then the integration over all space needing to be one would be the, the final argument. So, so hopefully this helps a little bit in seeing that even when you st first start it up, set it up very, very generally, we would have many parameters, but really in the end, we have three. We have some relationship here, which is actually then kind of fixed by um, the first derivative, and then really, um, yeah, really trying to make this fit and, and work here and all flow together is really what gives you that coefficient on, on uh, your energy, that constraint to say, what are the allowed energies? So um, a separate video will go through the math in a little more detail, but I hope this picture makes sense.